Rohan invested rupees X in a scheme which offers simple interest at the rate of 12% per annum for first three years and compound interest at the rate of 10% per annum for the next two years. After five years, he earned a total interest of rupees X minus 1772. If the same amount is invested in another scheme which offers compound interest at the rate of 15% per annum, then find the interest earned by him in two years. So, so if you actually understand uh, the question, the, the latter part of it is very simple. I mean, what we actually have to find out is very simple. He says if the same amount, right, same amount here refers to X. So if X is invested in another scheme, which offers compound interest at the rate of 15% per annum, then what is the interest earned by him in two years? So basically, if you know what the value of X is, then all you have to find out is the compound interest for two years at the rate of 15% per annum, right? Now, uh, you know, you know what the compound interest for two years at the rate of 15% per annum would be, right? Like, for example, if the rate of interest is 15% per annum uh, and the time period is two years, and then what will be the compound interest? A plus B plus AB by 100, right? I'm not going to explain the basics of it. You know how to find out compound interest using the effective percentage formula, right? So going by that, the compound interest comes out to be what? 15 plus 15 plus 15 times 15 into 100. Right? This percentage is a compound interest, which is 30 and this is 2.25. So we can say the compound interest is going to be 32.25 percentage. 32.25 percentage of what? 32.25 percentage of the principal amount, which is X here. Right? So basically the final answer is going to be 32.25 percentage of X. And all we need to do now is find out the value of X. How do we get that? From the first part of the question. What does it say? Rohan invested X in a scheme which offers simple interest at the rate of 12% per annum for the first three years. See, we have done this enough. Simple interest at 12% per annum for three years would mean a total simple interest of 36%. You get 12% every year for three years. So what is the total simple interest? 3 times 12, right, which is 36%, right? Now, and a compound interest at the rate of 10% for the next two years. See, compound interest at 10 percentage, compound interest at 10 percentage. See, this is 36 percentage of X. The simple test is 36 percentage of X. And what is compound interest? Compound interest at the rate of 10 percentage for two years. Would be how much? 21 percentage. Same formula, 10 plus 10 plus 10 into 10 by 100. Yes or no? Compound interest at the rate of 10 percentage for two years. So 10 plus 10, 20. 10 into 10 by 100 is 1. 20 percent, 21 percentage. So compound interest is going to be 21 percentage. 21 percentage of what? Will it be 21 percentage of X? No, it will not be 21 percentage of X. It will be 21 percent of 1.36 X. And this you should be able to understand mentally without having to put pen on paper. Now, why, how does it become 1.3 X? See, understand, we had invested X. The principal amount is X. This X after three years becomes what? 1.36 X. After three years, X becomes 1.36 X. Why did it become 1.36x? How did it become 1.36x? Because in these three years, we were offered SI, simple interest. At what rate? At 12% per annum. So simple interest at the rate of 12% per annum, right? For three years will give us 36% interest. So that X plus 36% of interest will make it 1.36x. You're able to follow. 36% is 0.36x. We already have X. That X becomes 1.36x after adding interest to it. And now this 1.36x is the new principle for the next two years, right? Where we are being offered CI at what rate? 10% per, per annum. So what happens? Compound interest at the rate of 10% per annum for two years should be 21%. 21% of what? Of the principal amount, which is 1.36x. So that's how we have got SI as 36% of x, which is 0.36x and CI as 21% of 1.36x. Now look at it, he says after five years, after five years, meaning these three years plus two years, after these five years, he earned a total interest of rupees X minus 1772. Total interest of rupees, sorry. Total interest of rupees X minus 1772. You getting the point? Now, how do you find out the total interest I mean, you can cut down all these steps. You don't have to write total interest and all that, right? Just play with numbers. Total interest is equal to what? X minus 1772. But we know that the total interest that he has earned is 0.36X plus 
plus this 21 percentage of 0.36. 21 percentage of 0.36 x is nothing but 0 0.21. 21 percentage is 0 0.21. 0 0.21 into 1.36x. That's it. So this is the equation you have. x minus 1772 equals to 0.36x plus 0 0.21 into 1.36x. Now from this can you get the value of x? Yes. There's only one equation with one unknown value which is x itself. So solve this equation to get the value of x. So once you get x, substitute that here to get the final answer. The compound interest at the rate of 15 percentage per annum for two years. Yeah. So calculation is involved. I'm sure you will do the calculation yourself. Let me just write one more step here to give you the final equation. So we can we can take all these things on the other side. So we'll get x minus this 0.36x when it goes to the other side becomes 0.36x minus 0.36x minus how much is this? 0.21 into uh, 1.36. See, we have discussed in our speed math videos, right? When you have to multiply two uh, non-integer values, like 0.21 into 1.36, forget about the decimals. Just consider it as 21 into 136. As simple as that. In my view, 0.21 multiplied by 1.36, while it looks to be complex, it is as simple as 21 into 136. What is 21 into 136? 1360 plus 1360 plus 136. 1360 plus 1360 is 21, sorry, 27, 20, 27, 70 plus... Uh, 136 will be 2856. This is 2856. Now, 0.21 into 1.36. So, two decimals and two decimals will give you four decimals. So, this will become 0 0.2856. So, this becomes minus 0.2856x, which is equal to 1772. See, calculation you have to do. There is no way that you can avoid the calculation, right? You have to deal with that calculation. Now 0.36 plus 0.28 will be 0 uh, uh, 0.64, 0.6456. So this is like x minus 0 0.6456x, which is 1772. Or to simplify it further, this is like 10,000 minus 6,456. That will give you what? Uh, 3,544. Yes, no? 3,544. So that's like 0 0.35. 4, 4, x equals 1772. So then this if you see is yeah and this will give you 5000 x will come out to be 5000. I mean calculation you got to do you understand 1772 by 0 0.3544 uh, 4. so it's like 1000 sorry 10,000 by 2. You understand if you want to avoid this decimal this gets multiplied by 10,000 multiplying both the sides by 10,000. Yes or no? Multiply by 10,000, this becomes 3,544. Multiply this side also by 10,000. But then 1772 into 2 is 3,544. And these two can, gets cancelled here 5,000 times. So finally, we get the value of x as 5,000. x comes out to be 5,000. And now the final answer here will be ci is equal to 32.25 percentage of 5,000. Now do that calculation. See, 30% of 5,000 is 1,500. 2% of 5,000 will be 100. So that's like 1,600. 0.25% of 5,000. See, 25% of 5,000 is 1,250. 0.25% of 5,000 will be 1.25. So, so I think you just work on that. You, you understand? See, split and merge is the idea. 30% plus 2% plus 0.25%. 30% of 5,000, 1,500. 1% 5, of 5,000 is 50. So 2% will be 100. 0.25%. 1% of 5,000 is 50. So 0.25 will be 50 by 4, which is 12.5. So 1600 plus 12.5. 1612.5 is the final answer.